is an ongoing work with Young Borough, Luke Hayleshu, and Sin Yan. So let's start with a simple but fundamentally important question, which is, what is the Hilbert space for a two-sided black hole? So if we have ADS-CFT, uh, the CFT actually can give us some reference answer, which is the bulk Hilbert space should be factorized as the left part and the right part. But if we just look at it from the bulk point of view, from the gravity point of view, this factorization is not obvious at all because we have connected geometry. So this is one version of the so-called factorization puzzle, basically asking how gravity knows about factorization. And more generally, we can talk about the algebra type classification. We can think about what's the uh, type of algebra for one set of observables. We know that if you have different type of corrections, we have different type of algebra. Now suppose we have a full quantum gravity theory, then what should be the algebra type? So these questions, or say puzzles, they're mostly at the perturbative level, and we will prove that if we include all non-perturbative corrections, uh, actually we will solve this factorization puzzle in the sense that we can compute, in particular, the bulk trace of two-sided operator, and we will show that due to non-perturbative non corrections, it will factorize into a left trace and a right trace. This indicates the existence of a factorized basis this means the bulk Hilbert space is indeed factorizable. This should be in contrast with the perturbative Hilbert space uh, listed above, and it is not factorizable. So as for some detail, we will show that the wormhole corrections to the gravitational path integral actually they are crucially important for factorization. As for some concrete setup, uh, we will consider the theory of JT plus matter, and in particular, we want to have matter in the theory because we want to break the Hamiltonian constraint, having the left energy and right energy to be different so that the Hilbert space itself is possibly factorized. And to probe the property of the Hilbert space, we want to construct a set of bases by inserting operator in the past and then consider Euclidean time evolution. Then if you have enough number of such states, we should, be, we should be able to span the whole Hilbert space and then discuss what's the property of the Hilbert space. I also mentioned that uh, the bulk trace should be computed, and to compute the bulk trace, we use the replica trick and doing the analytic continuation. In the replica trick, we see that uh, there are some replica, replica wormholes. These replica wormholes are exactly the wormhole I mentioned in the previous slides giving us factorization. As for the result, we can use the bulk trace to talk about factorization. We consider concretely this operator k left, k right to be Euclidean time evolution, and we show that if we have enough number of states, uh, the bulk trace indeed factorized into two pieces. This means we have a factorized Hilbert space, but if you have not enough number of states, uh, the Hilbert space and the bulk trace, they don't factorize. We can use another technique to probe factorization is to consider this differential equation. Basically, this differential equation acting on any factorized function will give you zero. So then to probe factorization, we will just consider the average of the differential equation and even the uh, square of the differential equation. We will show that both of the averages will give you zero if you spend the full Hilbert space. This means uh, not only on average, but for each member of the ensemble, we get factorization. As for some final comment, although these two numerical plots, uh, they're only for uh, the leading order to e to the 1 over g Newton correction, we actually have an argument for all orders uh, to e to the uh, 1 over g Newton correction, and the factorization is still true. Uh, that's all what I want to say. Thank you very much. Okay. Any Thank questions? Uh, probably you had to go too fast for me, but I didn't understand why you said that the wormholes c cause factorization. T typically, we say they cause non-factorization. Can you explain a, a little more? Yeah, so uh, the wormholes we were considering are actually these replica wormholes. So usually when we consider uh, wormholes, we say that on average, there exists wormholes connecting different uh, branches and uh, or say different connected components that will lead you non-factorization. But here, these uh, wormholes we're considering here, they are very special in the sense that they are matter supported. And you can see that uh, it will have some matter geodesic going between the left side uh, separating the left side and the right side. This feature of having the separation will, in the end, after analytic continuation, lead to the factorization. The previous uh, non-factorization wormholes, they are usually the um, empty wormholes.
Okay. Thank you. Thank very you. Nice. Big applause. Okay, this was Gwendolyn. Now we have Himanshu Pariha. Yeah. Th th thanks. Um.